Hi guys, welcome back to Aid's Workshop. So it's been a long time coming, but we've got finally to the Y axis on the DRO and the fitting of that. A lot of it is very similar to the other two axes with the subplates and what have you. So uh, I won't show much of that. Um, but at least you can see the setup and how I've got it on me. Now I did miss a few bits of footage with it, but uh, so I apologize for that, but I pretty much explained what I've done. So enjoy guys. So, how to fit the Y scale. Um, ideal scenario, it would go in there, but with the table fully back in X, um, it's not physically gonna fit. It could go on its side, that way round, or uh, that way round, but then you've got the worry of swarf building up in the groove, and yeah, I don't want anything in the area between the reader and the scale. I'd rather have it this way up, um, with the, obviously gravity working for me. Um, so yeah, I pretty much decided it's going to bolt, the scale is going to bolt on the side of the casting here, and then there'll be a bridge over the top, something similar to what I did on the uh, X scale, bridge over the top mounting onto the Y carriage. So yeah, it's going here. So very similar design, a subplate for this to bolt onto first. I missed a bit of footage, um, but I've got the Y axis backing plate in place with the scale all clocked up and the cover just put on temporarily. Um, I had an issue with this one um, in getting it parallel to the ways. So I used three bolts and a set of spacers um, in behind the bolts, like basically washers. And I put varying thickness washers in uh, on the three to get it parallel in this plane. And I also found I had a tilt because this casting isn't quite square. So either side of the fastening bolts, I don't know whether you can see, you can see the brass spacer I put in, down in this area. But either side, quite close to the bolt, is uh, an M6 jacking screw. I drilled through, um, put a dimple in the casting, and the jacking screws have a pointed end. And they were screwed in to get uh, the scale square. Um, and then they were loctited in to the, uh, to the aluminium. So the main bolts that are holding uh, it on are not loctited into the cast, but the jacking screws are loctited into the aluminium, so they're not going to come loose. So, yeah, that's it in position. Oh, and of course, the scale in this orientation, up and down, was um, basically a DTI from the bed. Let me just come up a little bit. I basically, whoop, basically had a, uh, one of my scribing blocks on the bed here with a DTI, um, measured down onto the scale at this end, Hang on, you can't see again. <laughs> but at both ends, I measured, moved the table back and forth, measured down onto the top here and down onto the top here at this end um, to get it running square. And everything's within, you know, half a thou, a few tenths. So I think we're uh, we're happy with that. Next issue I have now from the reader, which is here, um, I have to build a bridge that comes up to fasten onto the table uh, or onto the carriage of the y-axis. Um, but it still has to allow this to go over the top, the uh, X to come over the top of it. So yeah, um, make up a bracket. So the first part of this bracket, um, aluminium spacer to bring me out beyond the, the guard. A um, couple of uh, M5 countersunk holes, either end. And these are 60 mil centers, and there is, in the reader, an M5 tapped hole. Uh, so yeah, a bit awkward. I need to show me filming this, but you get the picture. Um, those will screw on there. Uh, I'm not going to uh, tighten these quite at this stage. Don't want to put any force on the reader as it stands. Let me just hold it up into position. There we are. Okay. So there's the spacer that brings me out beyond my swarf cover. Um, so I, I put two M5 tapped holes in board of those. So the idea being, a um, piece of this 50 mil coming up. I'll chop something off roughly the length I want, you know, here somewhere. Um, and put those two holes in the end of there, ready to bolt that onto there couple of little workings out, a uh, piece of this bar, it's going to be 70mm long, uh, it's going to have two holes 10mm up, 
to match up with the holes in the smaller bracket that we've just made. Uh, countersunk for M5. Um, they don't need to be countersunk, but I will anyway. Um, and then two M5 tapped holes in the end face when I've melded it off. Um, again, 30 mil apart, keep it round figures. Um, you know, drilled and tapped, M5, ready to bolt the plate on top at 90 degrees to this one. So let's start making this plate. I've chopped a piece off in the chop saw. Just give a touch off. Should do us. Just square up that one end. Now yeah, that's cleaned up. I'll flick it round the other way and square up the other end now. And just give the other end. Um, it's measuring up at what was it? Seventy. What? Let me just double check that. <laughs> Yeah, 71.27. So I'll just set X to zero. Um, move across. Yeah, I'll probably take one mil first. And then I'll take 0.27. There's a one mil. Conventional, and then I'm looking at the DRO again. 0.27. Did I? I have now. Climb mill the last 0.27 off. That should drop you somewhere in the region of uh, 70 mil. It's not fussy. This um, I'm going to be making the other bits to suit the lens of this. So yeah, I'm not fussed at all Let's just clean the muck off there I don't know why it went back across spring pass I suppose we'll call it right so holes now lining the block up on the edge of the vise. Tighten the vise. Okay. Right. Let's get a datum. To pick up the edge. Just going to have to come into shot so we can see the kick. There. X0 on the DRO. Bring that up. So it's a four mil point. So two mil on the DRO is the centre. X zero gain. So I'm right on the edge. Okay. So I can come back to that any time. This is fifty mil stock. I haven't got the uh, DRO yet on this axis, so it's going to be whoop, out to be hand wheels. Come on. It's a bit uh, bit key. There, just lock that axis. Give myself a zero. Come back out the way. Come over two mil and lock the axis again. Lock the axis back to zero. And I'm going to want to come in ten mil. So ten mil on the hand wheel. Three, six. Nine, that's ten. Ten mil on the DRO, which is there. Okay, so that's the point at which. So yeah, 30 on Santos, this is 50, so I come in 10, up 10, which is where I want it. First one, move over 30, second one, then I'll flip the job up on end. I'm already 10 mil from the end of the vise. 
So I just drop back five and I'm on the right position for the center of this. So I've got my bits and pieces together. So, yeah, when I've got this other axis sorted out, um, you know, I've got to put two spots. Um, so what I'd probably do when I've got two axes, or the, the three axes <laughs> DRO running in total, I'd probably move over now, 30 mil spot again, then change the drill, because I can move from point to point very quickly without worrying about backlash, all that sort of idea. Um, I think I might have to tuck the head up a bit. Yeah, just a turn or so. Maybe another one. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I can come back to a point a lot easier. I'm just going to slide that parallel out. Good old WD-40 with aluminium. And again, I'm about to countersink this hole. Um, yeah, I could basically touch off the countersink on the first hole that I do. Countersink it to depth, as you're about to see me do. And then I could pretty much move over to the second one then. Um, in one hit, be happy to... Oh, I don't want to turn that on yet. Have I got 5 mil of travel? Yes. So I'm setting a zero on my Z. And I normally do these, yeah, five and a half mil. Um, this is in fresh air. I'm going to do it five. It'll still put it below clearance, uh, below surface. I normally go a little bit lower. And it's only 10 mil thick material, so. Okay, that's five mil deep. So yeah, normally I'd move over now and go to the same reading into the other hole, but I can't do that. Until I've got this axis finished, which won't be very long at all. Can I reach? Just, I think. So this first one, right. Just zero in the lead screw, undo the lock on Y. 30 mil, that's uh, 10 turns. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So these are 30 mil centers. Yeah, just uh, obviously with a DRO, I won't be changing uh, changing drills so often. I'll be moving more, but moving's quicker than changing the drill. But in this circumstance, changing the drill's quicker. So I set it up for the square, flush on the end of the vice again, so I've got the same readings. I'm still the correct reading down for the hole, the same centre, 30 mil. I've stepped back, or back in Y, 5 mil, to be in the middle of the plate, because I was at 10. So yeah, I'm going to alter any readings. I'm still going to move across the 10 turns for the second uh, hole, but yeah, I haven't got to do anything. I already have the DRO set. So. Yeah, two M5 tapped holes in here now. So I've got another bracket, um, two holes here. Now this is the tapping drill size for M5. And I want to use it, I want to put it here. And it's going to be bolted onto the carriage that moves back and forth. But underneath the X, I may have to put a little nick in there. But I'm going to hold it. Um, it's a bit tricky to do. I'm going to hold it in position, do this hole first and just spot it with the handheld drill with the 4.2 that will fit through the guide in this and it should be just right oh to have three hands would be good okay i got a mark right got that well marked now so i'm just going to put a smaller drill through first um, what should I put through? Three and a half, I think. And I'm just looking at what I'm likely to run into obstacle-wise, and I think I'm well in the clear of everything there. 
So, keeping it square, straight. Back to the tapping drill. Again, keeping it square, straight. Should have started off the surface. Ah, I'm on quite low torque there. Okay. So yeah, I'm well up above all the problem area. So, I think I'll get the vacuum out now. Vacuum that out of the way. Being brave now. I've got the torque turned down on the drill. Let's go a bit more on the torque. Tap stop. I think that should be enough. I don't know how well you saw that. I was concentrating on drilling, not filming. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get one bolt in there and then drill the other hole. Just went to bolt it on with one and then realised I can't fit the bolt through the hole. <laughs> So yeah, I'm going to have to drill that out to uh, a clearance hole. Okay, so let's get one bolt in. I haven't counted sunk these. The thread is a bit wonky, I think, but uh, not to worry. Oh, got my finger stuck in the back. <laughs> I will be putting an angle on the back here um, to avoid that rubber. But for the purposes of this, well, that's worked out quite nicely. It's just a little gap under that dovetail there, which means the table will still pass over the top. Okay. So I think I may need to take the hand wheel off, give myself access to the next bolt. You can't even see it where you are. So yeah, let's do that. That's the washer. That's the hand wheel. And I fitted a thrust washer or thrust bearing in here because there wasn't one in it. So I'm going to pull that out. But not a bad idea that I've taken that off because it does need a clean in there. Okay. Right, that gives me access to that second hole again now. So tapping drill again, which is that one, yes, just checking, just to spot it. Just started it with that, 
Okay, so that's that bracket bolted on there. I'm not going to countersink these. I think I'm going to leave them like they are. Um, but the good news is I can still access the little oil port there for lubricating the bed. So I have to offer my apologies. I lost a huge amount of footage. Well, not huge. The amount of footage of making this plate here. Um, what I did, we had these two, these three pieces in place when we left off. So I got a piece of bar, I measured with a rule, you know, from here to here with this square on the, on the, you know, square to everything and measured the distance. So I knew the overall length I needed, which allowed me to put these holes in. I bolted it on, squared it up again, and I scribed a line on the plate here, worked out where it had to go. There's two tapped holes in the end of this bar, much the same as I did with the other one. And basically from that scribed line, I marked down five millimeters and drilled and counterboard from the back. I assembled it all and then screwed it back on into position. I did remember to put a radius on there so the rubber can come beyond the, uh, the little plate. But yeah, I've been using it for a month or so now. No problems at all. What I have found, you can probably just pick it up. There's a little groove down in here on this uh, plate where my guard was just... I, I've taken it off to put this right, actually. Now that I've uh, taken it off, I spotted it. Where my guard was rubbing. So, uh, yeah, I've just run a file along that edge and taken a millimetre off. We should be fine now. But, yeah... So that is the part fitted and finished. Now, um, I've been asked what scales was I using with the DRO. So we'll try and answer that one. Uh, let's see if I can bring you in. They are the same make. It's upside down, I'm sorry. But uh, I'm sure you can do something here. Again, they're the Jing or Jing Si. The same make manufacturer as the DRO head unit itself. So that's why they work. They weren't the wrong pin configuration or anything like that. So the next question is, where did I get it from? Well, um, we'll answer that in a moment. Another question I've been asked is, how much travel did I lose? Uh, with putting the x-axis on the back of the table. So let's just set the y to zero. So let's see what we've got. I started right at the back of travel. I could gain about another three mil um, if I cut a little bit off the metal plate that's holding the rubber on, but that's acting as a stop protecting the DRO from hitting anything. So I have got 165 mil. Um, don't know what the original spec was, but I bet it wasn't much different to that. So question I've been asked, where did I get my DRO from? Well, eBay, and that was it, ABC Jewelry. Well, ABC Dash Jewelry Dash Co. Um, yeah, it, they come, it's come from China, but everything came, everything worked. So what have you? Take what back from that, what you will. Okay, so yeah, it's been a good old long project of well, the project didn't take me long, but the, the you know the series of videos on the DRO has uh, lasted quite a while. But uh, yeah, we brought it to a conclusion now. Um, everything's working fine. Very happy with it. My next sort of major project, which I haven't really looked into yet, I'm still undecided as the route to go down, is going to be power feed for the X-axis. So, yeah, that's um, that's going to be coming along. Um, I've got a few bits and bobs to report, um, so I think I'll do a, a shed talk. I forget which number this is going to be. Oh, it might be 24, 25, I think. 20, 25th. So it'll be my 25th shed talk. Um Good Lord, where has the time gone? Uh, I did my original Shed Talk. Um, shed Talk 2, 3, 4, up to 25. Over the past, what has it been? Two and a half years I've been uh, putting stuff on YouTube. Subscriber count. Uh, we're up now. Oh, very nearly six and a half thousand. So thank you all for sus subscribing. Um, lots of YouTubers say... Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell, leave me a message, whatever. Hit the bell, uh, I don't know what difference that makes, but hit the bell, like, so you get notified every time I put a video up. So, thank you for subscribing, guys. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all very soon with Shed Talk 25. Cheers now.